We start today in Puerto Rico, where residents came together to save some facilities in a historic park in Old San Juan. The community is asking for improved maintenance and care of the site. Our Francis Felix reports. Probably you have passed by the Luis Muñoz Rivera National Park on your way to Old San Juan. It's the biggest park in the colonial area of the capital. In the eyes of the community, lack of maintenance, limited basic services, and poor administration endangers the life of this recreational space. The Luis Muñoz Rivera National Park is a historic and relaxing park in the entrance of Old San Juan. His origins date back to the early 1900. The group Amigos del Parque, Friends of the Park, born has a movement to rescue the facilities from the abandonment, calling the attention to the authorities and neighbors. For Carmelo Sobrino, creator of the group, the government have an important role in the maintenance and care of the facilities. This is the national park. This is the Puerto Ricans park of the humble families. They are not coming anymore because of lack of maintenance and safety. We want the government to hear us, to be sensible and listen to our demands, because it's urgent to attend the park, the pavilion and restroom areas, to give the proper maintenance. The park is one of our touristic cards. Ana Goras, who is part of the group committee, explained what does this park means for her. The park is part of uh, the collective memory of Puerto Rico. Uh, generations have uh, participated of the life of the park. My mother always remembers her first kiss with her first boyfriend on a bench in Parque Luis Muñoz Rivera. And I brought my son forever to play in the park. So um, it's, it's a memory that we all share as Puerto Ricans. The architect and professor point out some of the main needs. Maintenance. We can start with that. No repair. Uh, the, there's a, an issue with all the flora. We really have to look at the trees and the bushes and uh, have a schedule for systematic trimming and, and caring and replanting. Some trees were lost after Hurricane Maria. And then uh, there's these wonderful mosaics in the peripheral sidewalks that really need attention. A lot have been uh, severely affected over time. Very deteriorated. The whole structure needs, uh, uh, some areas need replacement. So you need to go, you have to do an inventory. And that's what we're aiming at, an inventory of the, of the different structures, the benches, etc., and see what they each need. And that's where I I'm come in as a professor because I have a, a professional practice internship that I offer at the School of Architecture at the University of Puerto Rico. And our students, through that internship, they do pro bono work for usually the third sector. And we support um, any organization that crosses our path that needs our help. As you can see, the entrance to this hall is prohibited by the Department of Natural Resources because of damages in the infrastructure involving the roof. Well, the conversation with the public agencies is uh, part of a, a wider uh, reach out to all sorts of different disciplines, that many of which are uh, represented in the uh, group of the friends of the park. And the conversation is also to collect data, make sure we don't repeat our uh, efforts and that we uh, add whatever we do through my students, whatever we can do to help this project, um, that we don't have to start from, you know, from the very beginning, that these agencies might also have documentation that will be helpful as we move forward and that we can do that as swiftly as possible. And in these conversations, see how we can collaborate and actually help each other make this happen. The group Amigos del Parque will have the chance to express their concerns and solutions to the Department of Natural Resources in an upcoming meeting. Reporting from Olsen Juan, Puerto Rico, Frances Felix. All right, thanks so much, Francis. We're switching gears now in the Bahamas. Backyard farmers are getting a bit of a boost to help with food insecurity in the islands. Our One Caribbean News, Deandra Hamilton, has more on how the initiative is there to help hundreds of farmers get started. In an effort to combat the issue of food insecurity in the Bahamas, some 5,000 backyard farmers across the country will benefit from a joint initiative by the Agriculture Development Organization and the Church Commercial Farming Group. 
an organization of more than 300 churches. They've given to us $197,987.70. <laughs> that was head of the TCCFG, Reverend Patrick Paul, speaking at the launch of the program held earlier this month. He was explaining how the project came about. The joint initiative is the largest program of its kind in the Bahamas. It will provide the necessary supplies and oversight to start up 500 backyard farmers in less than 90 days, with 4,500 more to follow within a year. While speaking at the recent launch of the event, Executive Chairman of the ADO, Philip Smith, said he was excited about the initiative. Teach a man to fish rather than giving him a fish. And he can feed him and himself, his family forever rather than just a day. And so I think this is an opportunity for us to teach a man to fish. Minister of Agriculture for the Bahamas, Clay Sweeting, was also present at that launch. He noted that his ministry will continue to support both entities for a blossoming agriculture sector. My ministry will continue to support ADO. We will continue to support the church. We will continue to work hand in hand to educate Bahamians and to grow agriculture in the Bahamas. We look forward to a prosperous and a progressive partnership with ADO and with the Church Commercial Farming Group for many years to come. DeAndre Hamilton reporting. All right, thanks so much, DeAndre. Well, meantime, NASA's new moon rocket has run into a launch postponement today after fuel leaks were discovered during final liftoff preparations. The rocket was set to take off Monday morning on an odd manned mission beyond the moon. But the launch team reported an issue with one of the rocket's four engines. It all happened when hydrogen was run through the engines to prepare for launch. The next launch opportunity is set for September 2nd, but that will depend on how testing goes. In the meantime, as summer winds down, it may come as no surprise that a recent report released by the Department of Transportation shows that the number of air travel complaints surged in June. Today, Sam Brock is breaking down that report for us. This morning, with summer travel winding down, a new report reveals significant elevation in travel complaints. The Department of Transportation releasing a consumer report which found airline complaints soared to sky-high levels in June, up nearly 35% from May and almost 270% from before the pandemic. In the first six months of 2022 alone, there have been more complaints than all of 2019. The new numbers, no surprise for those who took to the skies this summer. It has been the worst experience ever. With airline reliability, or lack thereof, topping the list of gripes. The report zeroes in on which airlines were the most punctual. Alaska, Delta, and Hawaiian Airlines landed on time most often though all were well below historic norms from the last 20 years, while Frontier, JetBlue, and Allegiant make up the bottom three with the highest rate of delays. Allegiant landing around two out of every five flights late, the airline telling us it continues to be impacted by an unprecedented labor shortage, adding they are actively working to mitigate the problem. On the cancellation front, American, Delta, and United all saw the highest cancellation rates this June, though they also offered the most flights. American and Delta tell us they have since improved their operations. June was the worst month of the year when it comes to flight delays and cancellations. Now, I think things have improved significantly, but I think it really underscores just how bad things got with air travel. One key tip ahead of the holiday travel boom, book early flights. The report finding those flights were about 25% more likely to be on time than those at the end of the day. And if you're caught in a travel nightmare with a delayed or canceled flight, be sure to ask the airline for compensation. Everything is on the table and it never hurts to ask. Still, some hope for travelers heading into the fall. Many experts are expecting ticket prices to drop after the busy summer season. And of course, if you take to the road instead, gas prices are still falling. Good news for drivers over Labor Day weekend.